So I'm 27, going on 28, and I feel like, hmm, I guess <laughs> I'm in my late 20s. Oh, that's crazy. So I feel like I can now speak on some things that I learned in my 20s, specifically some spiritual lessons that I learned in my 20s. So I wanna share that with you. Obviously when it comes to your 20s, there's a lot of healing, growing, drama, mess, everything that just teaches you a lot. But like I said, specifically I wanna focus on spiritual lessons. A, because this is a spiritual channel, but B, I feel like it's a whole separate world like because i could talk about heartbreak and i could talk about being broke and i could talk about not knowing what you want to do with your life these are all things that as a 20 year old we navigate through but as spiritual beings which we all are but as spiritual beings that are very in tune with our spirituality we go through a lot more <laughs> um maybe it's not even that we go through a lot more but the thing is we're so aware that we feel it heavier than others. So I decided to make this video so that you could find someone that you could relate to, maybe gain some reassurance, maybe realize that you're on the right path and that what you're going through is normal as a spiritual 20-something. Let's get into it. Wait, but before we do, please ignore my curtains. I know they're a mess. My cat has been fucking with them all day, so I just left them because if I move them right now, he's gonna wake up out of his sleep and start moving them again. So I'm just gonna leave them. <laughs> but yeah, let's get into the video. 10 spiritual lessons that I learned in my 20s. Number one, just because they feel familiar does not mean that they are your twin flame, soulmate, love of your life. There have been a few people that I've met and I've been like, oh my God, I met you for a reason. I feel so drawn to you. It's like a magnet. I feel connected to you. Just like so many, so many strange feelings that I have with these people that I'm like, I've known you in past lives. Like you are someone that I'm meant to be around. And I take that and I run with it and uh, I turn it into, you're my soulmate. <laughs> you're my twin flame. You're my twin flame bestie. You're my soulmate bestie. Like, I don't know what it is. I talked about this in another video, but my therapist says that I tend to fantasize, um, create fantasies of other people and of situations and kind of create them in my head. And yes, sometimes you meet people and they can be that cosmic connection or some type of cosmic connection. For example, I'm 95% sure that I met my twin flame last year, and I could be wrong, but I feel it. Uh, might not be a romantic situation, but definitely a cosmic relationship. And um, what was that? That was weird. <laughs> my closet just like made a noise. Um, yeah, so there's also been instances in which I have been so sure that someone was a twin flame or a soulmate, and they weren't. I don't speak to them, they're not in my life. They weren't. I mean, my ex was very likely my karmic partner, which is a cosmic connection, very karmic. Um, but at one point I thought he was like my soulmate and he wasn't. So this is just a reminder to not get in your head, just allow things to be. And maybe one day you can look back and be like, yeah, this person was my soulmate, but let's not try to put all of these titles on people. Every now and then, yeah. If you don't get too attached to the idea, there's no harm in it. But if you do get attached to it and then you're disappointed when you realize they're not what you thought they are, that's when it can get a little bit harmful. So just understand that not every connection that feels intense is a soulmate. Number two, what's meant for you won't miss you. I've talked about this before. I look back at so many things and I'm like, God, like, I really wish that would have worked out. And I'm not even talking about people. I'm talking about like opportunities and things and. I wish I started my YouTube channel earlier and I wish that, 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 but what's meant for you will not miss you. There have been dream jobs that I've applied to and felt so close to and done the interview for and then not gotten the job and been like, fuck, or I don't even know. Like there have been so many things I look back on and I'm like, oh, I wish I did that when I had the chance or I wish that, that. What's meant for you will not miss you. Just keep telling yourself that. Keep telling yourself that and it will help you get through certain things and rejections because I always say there's no rejection, just redirection. Number three, manifesting is very real. However, you have to put in the work. So you can't just be like, I want a Tesla, I want a Tesla, I want a Tesla and expect a Tesla to pull up on your driveway and be free or something like that or to win it in a draw. Sometimes things like that can happen. They can. I remember when hoverboards were a really big thing um, I won one in an Instagram giveaway. Back when hoverboards were like 
$1,200. Like they were like $1,200 for a freaking hoverboard. 2016, all the celebrities and influencers were rolling around their mansions on a hoverboard. I wanted one so bad, but I knew I couldn't afford it. And I won one. And there are manifestations that can come to fruition just by thought and visualization, yes. But it's not all the time. In fact, it, most of the time it doesn't happen that way. I don't know why it happens that way sometimes. Usually there's some level of work that's been put into it. So I guess that hoverboard didn't really fall in my lap. I did manifest it. I actively manifested it. I looked at the hoverboard and I said, I want one of those, but I don't want to pay for it. So I started looking up giveaways. I started looking up all these ways of getting them. And I entered a bunch of giveaways on Instagram over and over again. And I won one. Would it have just shown up on my doorstep? No, I had to put in the work. Was it easy work? Yeah, it kind of fell in my lap, but it didn't. I put in the work. So I'm saying this to say, if you have a dream, go after it and work your hardest to manifest it. Give it thought, give it visualization, give it good energy alongside putting in the effort that it takes to get yourself to where you need to go. Because you do have to work alongside manifesting. So things won't always fall into your lap. So just be aware of that and understand that you have to put in the work. You can't just say, I want to own a house one day, but do nothing to get there. Dreams don't work if you don't. Number four, words hold power, use them. But be careful with them. I'm the kind of person that when I say things, they happen. So I say things a lot. For example, the free hoverboard thing. I kept saying, I'm gonna get a free hoverboard. I'm gonna get a free hoverboard. I didn't know how the fuck I was gonna do it, but I kept saying that. My car, I kept saying, when I get my car, when I get my car. When I get my car, I had no money. <laughs> I had no idea how I was gonna get my car, but I did it. Even the other day, um, I was at work and I work at like a social club, like a private members lounge with like just like a bunch of rich people and I was watching this young pretty black girl interacting with some like rich person. They were having like an interview, sit down, um, like a meeting and I was watching her and as I was working there I was like damn like I want to be on the other end of this interaction. I want to be the young pretty black girl sitting down with some rich CEO having a meeting. I don't want to be working at the social club that they're attending and that they pay thousands of dollars to attend. I want to be in the meeting at the social club. And um, I just kept saying that, like I was venting about it. And I was like, I want to be that person. Tell me why when I was at work, I got to talking with someone, networked a little bit. And um, long story short, um, we are in the same industry and I have a meeting with him on Wednesday at the same social club on my day off. <laughs> so I will be that young, pretty black girl in the meeting with someone important. Um, and I find that very interesting because I kept saying it and it happened. So words are powerful, use them. Number five, something else that I learned is that you have to be very specific about what you want to manifest. Just be careful, be careful what you wish for. You need to be very specific. You know, you don't want to accidentally manifest something in your life that you don't want. For example, manifesting a specific person is not always it like you have to be as specific as you can of course but not when it comes to humans for example let's say you really want to be on a show on uh, hbo and that's just like your dream so you put hbo on your vision board and then somehow you end up becoming like an assistant at hbo great role great job if that's what you want but if you want to be zendaya on euphoria on hbo max you better put that on your vision board. You better speak that into existence. You better be specific about what you want. Get specific and get clear because you never know what you're accidentally bringing into your life. Another important spiritual lesson I learned is that I need to always trust my gut and my intuition. And I'm still learning this. I'm still trying to master this. Um, I feel like building trust within yourself is the key to that. You just need to trust yourself, your opinions, your likes, your dislikes, your thoughts your intuition. There have been so many bad situations that I could have avoided had I just trusted my gut. My gut is always right. I have a really good intuition and I feel like if I just actually accepted that and leaned into it and trusted myself in that more, I could avoid some things and I could create better experiences for myself. Um, so this is a lesson that I've recently learned and that I'm trying to really, um, you know, practice in my everyday life so I think it's really important trust your gut and trust your intuition every time you see that your gut was right take note of it take note of it remember it 
allow the thought to enter your mind sit with it for a moment so that you remember that the next time when you're like hmm remember the last time i should have trusted my gut but didn't remember the last time i trusted my gut and i was right to number seven ah this is one that has taken me a long time to learn but it is what it is money is an energy and it always comes back it always comes back money always comes back it is an energy so give it good energy stop stressing if you can stop getting anxiety every time you open up your app to check your bank account i have struggled with money before um definitely and i also come from a family that i mean they're pretty well off but i think my family's well off because there have been money struggles before I was born. So um, I guess those like worries and anxieties around money were like kind of instilled into one of my parents. And then because of that, it was instilled into me, even though they never worried about money. They never worried, I never worried. I grew up skiing and going on vacations and like, you know, I grew up pretty nice, so horseback riding and dance competitions and gymnastics, like they never worried. But I guess it's that anxiety that they have rooted in them that I got. So I was giving my money bad energy. And I've been really trying to switch it around, especially like working full time now. Like I have a lot more money and I'm not used to it sometimes. So I'll get anxiety when I spend and I'm thinking I'm overspending, but I'm not. I'm just spending. Um, so I've been really trying to understand that and like spend money and be like, this is okay okay that i'm spending money so for example the other day i went out two nights in a row got some drinks i probably spent like 130 over two days um, which is out of my usual budget but like i don't go out that much so i was like oh my god i spent so much money and then i was like hold on ashley that's okay that's okay and i kept reminding myself that's okay and then the next day my um my work was giving away free plants and there are these beautiful big plants, so I took one. I was like, mm, why not? So I took it. It was too big and it was kind of ugly, so I sold it for like 85 bucks. I made the money back in one day. One day. And then I made some Etsy sales for the full moon worksheets. And I was like, okay. The money came back. I didn't need to worry because it always comes back. So drill that into your brain. Money is an energy and it always comes back. Okay. Number eight divine timing is always on time it is never late so trust it um for example let's say you like someone um and they decide to move to another country for a couple of years and you really feel like this is your person maybe they're not your person maybe they are but you're trying to force it you know or you're disappointed because they're leaving just trust the universe man if you really feel like this is your person and something tells you and you have a great feeling and I don't know, your spirit guides are talking to you and your psychics are telling you and your tarot readings are telling you this is your person. Divine timing is always right, trust it. Maybe in four years, things will work out exactly how they're supposed to. Maybe four years you'll reconnect and you'll have the most beautiful relationship. But maybe if you get together right now, you're not ready for each other and you'll ruin it. And it'll go to shambles and it'll be trash. And then you'll ruin a good thing. Don't rush it, just trust in divine timing because it is always on time. That job opportunity, maybe it's not the time for it, but maybe in a year, you'll be ready for it. And it'll be even better and higher pay than you ever expected. Keep it in mind, divine timing is always on time. Number nine, aligning yourself is crucial. So aligning yourself, I should get specific to what you want. For example, let's say you want to be some corporate girly, at the top of the chain, working in the top level office, you need to align yourself to that. First of all, the simple things. Change up your wardrobe. Start dressing like that bitch. Start dressing like her or him, sorry. <laughs> if you feel like that job is gonna require you to wake up early, start waking up earlier. Start your morning routine earlier. Get in that habit. Familiarize yourself with the area of the offices. For example, let's say there's like some street in the city that you live that has all the corporate offices that you dream to work in. Start walking those streets up and down and imagining yourself there. Find the local coffee shops, find the local this and that that you see yourself going to when you work there. Align yourself to the destiny that you want and it will come to you. Once what's going on in your brain matches your 3D, it'll get into alignment and it will present itself into your everyday life in 3D. So align it as much as you can. 
If you want to meet a good, classy, future partner and you're hanging out at dive bars and frat houses to party, switch up your environment. Go to upscale hotel bars. Go to rooftop patios. Like, change up where you're going. Go into the rich areas and go to a nice coffee shop there. Switch it up. Don't be hanging out at the Thursday $2 shot spot and think you're gonna find some classy, rich business person that you wanna settle down with. It's not gonna happen. Go to upscale art galleries. Go to bookstores in the business section of the city that you wanna live in. Align yourself with what you want in your life. And finally, number 10, one of the final lessons that I've learned that's been hard for me to grasp is people are in your life for reasons and seasons. Not everyone is meant to stick around. Mm -hmm. The person that you thought was your twin flame, maybe they weren't and they were just in your life because you needed to go through some spiritual lessons at that point. That ex that you thought was your forever, maybe you just needed the heartbreak to grow the fuck up. That best friend that you've known for 15 years, maybe you needed each other and now you don't. Maybe she taught you things that you would have never learned without her and maybe you taught her things that she would have never learned without you. Maybe the season is three months, one year, 10 years, 20 years, who fucking knows? people are in your life for reasons and seasons so take that and remember that and don't take shit personally all right guys my camera's dying so i'm gonna say a quick goodbye thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it share your spiritual lessons that you've learned in the comments down below and if you like this video give it a like subscribe and i guess that's it sorry to rush the outro but like the red battery symbol is just flashing so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye guys